I consider it an honor to stand before you here in these meetings. And I do pray that the Lord would use my words to uh, speak to your hearts and convey what he has given to me. There was a time when the love of the Father was not in me because I did love the world and the things that are of the world. However, there did come a point in time when the Lord opened my eyes to be able to see the great love wherewith he loved me. Even when I was dead in sin, he showed this to me. He quickened me together with Christ. And I do thank the Lord for his rich mercy and his great love wherewith he loved me and bestowed his love upon me in his Son, Jesus Christ. And as I was recounting the ways that the Lord worked for my good, I was reminded over and over again of his love in directing and guiding me. Psalm 37 verse 23 refers to the steps of a good man and that they are ordered of the Lord. And when I consider the way he has ordered my steps, it is very evident to me that he has brought me to the place I am, both spiritually and also in physical location, to give me the benefit to know him and to seek him. So in this time of personal testimony, I want to do two things. And the first of which is testify that the Lord is good. I want to share some of the ways that he has ordered my steps because he loves me. First of all, the Lord did give me a godly and a capable mother who was faithful in teaching and guiding me in the ways of the Lord. And when I was about six years old, I remember that my father, according to the flesh, went astray. And as a result of this, during the next three years, there was upheaval and unrest in our home. Through many circumstances that were undesirable at that time, the Lord brought my mother and I to Missouri, which is where her family was. There were many hard times that we experienced, but through them, I saw my mother trust in the Lord and remain faithful to him. And she is an example that the Lord gave me in my life to be able to follow because I can consider the end of her faith. Amen. I also saw the Lord care and provide for us in ways that we could not explain at times. He worked through the brethren, he worked through our family who are believers, and he provided all things that were needful for life and for godliness. As I grew up, I am confident that the scripture in 1 John 5.16 was fulfilled. 1 John 5.16 reads, If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he, that is the Lord, shall give him life for them that sinneth not unto death. And I know that there was a time I chose to pass over the love of God. And I also know that the prayers of my mother were heard and I was given life. I do thank the Lord for my mother who spent much of herself to give me a good foundation of my faith. And she gave all of herself to do what was right and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. For my high school years, my mother decided that it would be best uh, to homeschool me, much to my own displeasure at that time. However, this is another step that I see that the Lord was ordering, because as time progressed, I did indeed see that this was a benefit and this was the best thing for me. And I began to enjoy where the Lord had led me. It was in this place that I met Brother Aaron, who is now my husband. The Lord used him to bring me to a deeper fellowship with himself. For Brother Aaron was and still remains to be one who spurs me on to love and to good works. Amen. I am thankful for him and that I can confidently say that we are heirs together of the grace of life. It was by Brother Aaron that the Lord brought me to be a partaker of Brother Given and Sister June's ministry where the Lord has now allowed me to labor as well. And I consider this an honor too. I thank the Lord for his love and guidance to bring me where I am in Christ Jesus. 
in the presence of the congregation now and before the holy angels, before the Lord and his Son, I want to confess that I love the Lord because he first loved me. Now, secondly, in this testimony, I want to share with you what the Lord has given to me concerning his love. Even as Peter and John were going to the temple to pray and they met this lame man, their response to him was, what I have, I will give to you. And so that's what I want to do this morning also. I want to share with you what the Lord has given to me concerning his love. Love has been from the beginning because we know that God is love. God was in the beginning. So we conclude that love has been from the beginning. As time progressed and we look through the ages, we can see the love of God emerging in the affairs of men. In the time of Adam and Eve, the Lord did not allow them to go back into the garden after they had sinned. And I see the love of God in this. Because he said, lest they put forth their hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The Lord would not allow them to continue in this fallen state that man was now in. He did not allow for them to live this way forever. I see his love coming into play in this divine decision, for we would have remained unacceptable and alienated from him should we have continued in the garden and eaten of the tree of life. However, the Lord had, has reserved the right in Christ Jesus for those who remain in him to eat of the tree of life now that we have been reconciled to him. Now in the time of Abraham, the Lord made his covenant with Abraham, promising to bless all the nations of the earth in him. He made a people to be called by his own name, and the very seed that he spoke of to his servant Abraham would be brought into the world by these chosen people. God's love for Christ, I see, came into the picture here also, because he was preparing and culturing a people to which to send his son. In the time of the law, while this law remained, and until the fullness of time, the hearts of men were veiled. While love was commanded under the law, the hearts which were veiled of men could not respond properly in obeying the command. No perception was granted where the veil remained. And in all of this, the Lord was laboring to show mankind our waywardness in order to bring us to Christ, that we may be saved in this day of salvation. Amen. I want to move also into three different areas of thought that um, were a particular blessing to me. And um, I did have my notes before the sermons were preached, by the way. Brother Mike covered one of my points, but I just wanted to share with you, like I said, what the Lord has given to me. So it was a confirmation for me to see that the Lord is ministering and orchestrating here in our midst. The first point was that we have received of the love of God for Christ's sake. We have now received and are being able to partake because of Christ, but this is in all areas of our salvation. We have received what we have from the Lord because of Christ. We receive nothing outside of him. One reason that we receive of God's love for Christ's sake is because Christ brought the love of God within our reach. 1 John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Before Christ died, the love of God was concealed. But in this time and in this one act, the Lord made manifest his love toward mankind through his Son. If any man believe in him, he will be saved, and there is no greater love than this. And this shadow that I saw of um, the fathers, in Deuteronomy 7, this is said to the children of Israel, The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. The Lord brought about the deliverance of the children of Israel because of the promise that he gave to their fathers. And I want to draw a parallel with the promise that was given to Christ. In Psalm 2, verse 8, the Lord says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen 
for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Mm -hmm. We have been given to Christ by the Father, yes. and we are only partakers of the things, the good things that the Father has, because we are in Christ. Amen. Thus we have received of the love of God for Christ's sake, not because of any righteousness of our own, but because the Father loves the Son, and we have been made a part of his Son. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is where love is found. It is in Christ. Therefore it is not reasonable to assume that someone who is not also in Christ would be able to partake of the love of God. Reasoning by the same measure, it would be unjust for the Lord not to shed his love upon those who are indeed in his Son, Christ Amen. Jesus. First John 3, verse 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. We know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten of the Father. Therefore, being called the Son of God ourselves is evidence that we have been begotten by Him, that we are in Him, and we are engaged in this love of God. This, again, is not a recommendation of anything we have done, for this is all of the Father. This manner of love is an attractive and comely love that is worth much meditation at least this side of glory, it will never be exhausted. John 17, verse 26, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And this was very precious to me, because if Christ were not beloved of the Father, we would have no hope of being loved of the Father ourselves. Yes. But now, because we enter into the love of God that he had for Christ, we are able to participate in this very same love ourselves. Now I wanted to consider the love of God being an environment also. This is an environment that the Lord has prepared for us that we may mature and grow in. John 15, 9 and 10 says, As the Father hath loved you, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. This love is not something that we attain the fullness of and move on from. We continue in it and abide in it, or remain there. This is one of the provisions that the Lord has given to us while we are in this world, abiding in his love because nothing can remove us from there. Amen. Amen. It is a safe haven where our soul finds rest and peace. Ephesians 5 verse 2 says, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. We are not exhorted to go anywhere on our own. But rather, as we have seen the example in Christ, so we follow. While we are walking in love, we are progressing and advancing closer to the Lord. Amen. And in this, we are also becoming more like him. Because we are drawing closer to him, we are being conformed more into his own image. And this is done in his love. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, this is part of a prayer that was prayed for the Ephesians. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. In order to comprehend and understand the love of Christ, we must first be rooted and grounded in it. Otherwise, this ability to understand would be out of our reach. 
as the Lord will not disclose his love to anyone who does not desire to be established in it, he will also not withhold it from those who seek it. The Lord has planted us in his love, and as we continue and abide in it, he will open our hearts to understand it more. And there is, uh, by the Lord's design, a power of his love. He has, he has orchestrated this, that we be constrained by his love. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. This is something that is strong, brethren. We can be sure that when the love of Christ has affected us in this manner, we have truly seen and comprehended it. Amen. One who does not have this understanding will not be constrained by it. But just as sure, the ones who see and comprehend will be drawn to him. And there is also, this is very tender to me, the power to perfect. The Lord has given this. Brother Tim, your message yesterday ministered to me greatly because this is a very large desire of mine, that the Lord's love be perfected in me. 1 John 4 verse 12 says, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. God has made his abode in us. And this is one of those good works that he has begun in us, and we can be sure he will be faithful to complete it. Amen. Though no man has seen God with the human eye, we do see him working in his children who love each other. As he dwells in us, he is perfecting his own love within us. And this is what others see coming forth, flowing out of our bellies. Jesus said that men would know we are his disciples because of our love one for another. This is an evidence that we have, that we have truly been with Jesus. In summation, I do confess that I long to see these things of the love of God more clearly because I know that the more I am able to see, the more he will be able to, to give me. He will enlarge my borders and enlarge my heart. So I desire that the Lord would show me more. And I thank the Lord for this time that he's given us this week because he has indeed ministered this to me. And I am confident to you all also. Amen. I see that the Lord has indeed begun the process of perfecting his love in me and I am very encouraged by it but it also brings this constraining aspect back to my heart because as I see his work it it fans a flame within me to be more zealous to seek Amen. more and so I pray now that the Lord would use what he's given to me to encourage your heart and to uplift you and uh, to provoke you to thought and also to thankfulness for uh, the great love where he, wherewith he has loved us all.